Wow. Wowzers. Look at that. The Volvo Penta engine on our 38 foot sailing boat, she had a bit of an overheating mystery. For those of you who are subscribed and follow along on our adventures, you may cast your mind back a few videos ago to this video here. When we were out sailing, we were out to sea, when all of a sudden we discovered that we needed to get Hank to the vets, and we needed to get him to the vets fast. So we were racing as fast as this old girl will possibly go on a good day, that's seven knots, which makes the whole thing all the more stressful. We had full sails up, we engaged the engine, and for the first time ever, I pushed the engine as hard as she would go, way past 2,000 revs into the upper end of the rev range, and then in no time at all, an alarm sounded. It was the overheating alarm. So as if the situation wasn't stressful enough, we now had to try and figure out why our Volvo Penta engine was overheating. It was a mystery that needed solving. So we went down below and the first thing I looked at was the sea strainer, just to make sure there was nothing in it and it wasn't blocked and it was all clear everything looked fine. So then I traced further along the system and that gets us to the raw water pump. I took the front of the raw water pump off, had a look around, the impeller looked absolutely fine, no splines had broken off, all good to go. Put that back together. We looked over the edge of the boat, the water seemed to be coming through fine and so we couldn't figure it out. In the end we had to sail and we did motor sail for a decent amount of the trip but not at full speed. We were probably hovering around 1800 rev range and the engine seemed perfectly happy with that. It was for some reason when we went to the upper rev range that we had problems. If you're wondering what happened to Hank then at the end of this video I'll pop a link up and you can watch that video if you haven't done so already. If you are new here do consider hitting the subscribe button it really helps the channel. And that's basically how we ended up here now trying to sort out this Volvo Penta overheating mystery and the next step I decided to take was to follow the system round and then get to the heat exchanger and try and get a look inside there and see if there's any blockages or what's going on. So let's get into it. So after locating the heat exchanger I noted there were two caps, one at the front of the engine and one at the back. Initially the cap at the back of the engine looked easier to get to, certainly in terms of my hand actually being able to touch it, but then I looked at just how much seemed to be in the way when it came to not only taking the cap off but then removing the tubes. So then I changed gear and decided to go in from the front because it looked like all I needed to do was move the alternator out of the way and maybe a hose, which looked like a simpler job. So that's where we started. Now that we've taken the belt off, we push that alternator all the way to the side. It almost gives us enough clearance to get in just down here to the end of the, the cap for the heat exchanger. I think we're going to need to move a couple more bits out of the way, namely this piece and this pipe. But before we remove this pipe, we're going to have to get rid of the coolant that's currently sat in the uh, in the tank. So to drain the coolant from the engine can be quite a messy affair. There's a little plug that you need to unscrew and then coolant spills out everywhere. And you try and capture as much as you can, but we're in the water and glycol is toxic. So I'm going to use this little thing here. This is a pump that I bought at Lidl. It was one of those impulse purchases, you know, right up there with a the socket set that falls apart. But I'm going to pop it in the top of the coolant uh, tank and see if we can drain the coolant out or as much as we need to cool out without making too much mess. This hose might be a bit of a git to get off. It's certainly never come off since I've had it. Such a happy crab swimming in all that toxic green stuff. It was pretty tricky to get off of there, and uh, all I did was just just try to break the seal really gently with a screwdriver and then uh, just twist, 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 twist. And uh, I'm, ex I'm speeding up about 15 minutes worth of chipping away, but well, that has come off. And that has come off, let's say, to make way for that cover there. I'm hoping I can get it out the way without taking the other end off. Now, just to make sure that I put everything back together the right way around again, the right way, the right, the right, I sound like Jonathan Ross, the right way around again, uh, I'm gonna take pictures. 
so here we are just so we get the correct orientation beware this is a dangerous job people I have taken the last screw out but the cap isn't exactly coming off free so and it's difficult to sort of get to the side of it so you have to move to the port side of the boat I think. I can just about get on the side of it but it's it's got a solid seal I don't know if that's just corrosion built up over time uh, sealed with paint the engine paint so I'm going to really gently try and tap a screwdriver in there and just see if I can slowly prise it apart hopefully without doing any damage to the cap or the uh, or the metalwork of the engine. Ooh, oh, that didn't take too much, although, let's have a little look in there. All right, so that's not too bad, that'll clean up quite nicely. That does look pretty clogged up with some random bits of gunk that have made it through the sea strainer. Now we're basically gonna repeat the process on the other side, and so we're gonna get these two hoses off, hopefully without too much drama. And then we're gonna take this off as well. When, uh, when the engine was overheating, one of the things that I didn't really suspect was the exhaust elbow. Again, that's something else you could check for being clogged up, but I replaced this exhaust elbow last year. And so I'd be surprised if that was clogged up. This is, this pipe is on here real good. So I'm just gonna try and sort of gently break away any seal without splitting the hose, hopefully. And uh, then we can reuse it. After a little prizing. Oh, that's one. All right, now this one is super difficult to get off. So I've just, I've just taken it off from the, uh, from the exhaust elbow. And then here, I just, I can't get behind it to sort of try and break the seal. So this has proven really difficult to get to. Um, I might try and just undo the, I might try and undo the bolts, although I don't know if you can see the last bolt, which is just down in that little dark crevice there. That'd be very tricky to get to, especially with this pipe in the way. I can just about reach that second one in there. So there's three. I don't seem to have anything that can get into that awkward angle. I don't think there is a tool that exists that can get down there and into that bolt. So I think I'm gonna to have to take this thing off, which is the starter motor to move that out of the way and then try and come from underneath to get to that last, to get to the last one of these. And the starter motor, so could do with like a ratchet spanner set and that would probably help. Just got that little bolt underneath. Come out now, I don't really I want to get any seawater inside that. So let's just pop that down there. Hopefully now that clears the space for me to get my hand around and I can get that last bolt out. This one certainly didn't need any persuasion to come off. Wow. Wowzers. Look at that. So this must have been a previous owner because we don't have Every single, unless, unless the impeller that's in there now is damaged, but I've never had a broken impeller of all the servicing that we've done to the engine, but at some point an impeller has been absolutely destroyed. Wow, that is a decent amount of impeller. It's been lost up there. That wouldn't have been helping. It could be part of the issue. Look at this, we've got little pieces of impeller lodged in there. Bit of an impeller spline there lodged in the uh, tubes for the heat exchanger and again so we want to take this out really and we need to be careful removing this this might be in there quite tight i've never removed it but again we don't want to do any damage to it because these things are like 1500 quid again something ridiculous So after all that, 
I can get it out that far and then it hits, hits the back of where the sail drive connects to. Super annoying. I can't get past that, so I'm guessing I'm going to have to figure out how to move this whole section of engine over slightly so I can pull this off. Hey, nothing's ever straightforward. I am random for now, hoping that this moves. more bolts to undo and they are behind this little black box a couple here i've undone these all of these screws that hold the engine in place and two of them are threads here but i don't need to get the engine all the way off i just need to move it over slightly so that we have clearance here That almost just seems like a bit of a design fault. Like if this could come out the other way, this would be <laughs> so easy. Uh, I think I've got enough clearance now here that we should be able to pull this up. There's again some residual moisture that's going to be coming out of here. And we've got the starter motor, which we obviously have to move sitting right underneath it. So I'm just going to yeah, try and cover the starter motor up so it's not getting covered in salt water or coolant. I'm guessing that is some kind of sensor maybe. I don't know, but it is in the way. That's why it's moved. So the moment of truth. <laughs> ah, I can see why this hasn't been removed for a while. Everything, and I do mean everything that could be in the way, is in the way. Alright, let's take this exhaust pipe off. I'm literally... I feel like I'm primarily filming now, just so I remember which bits go where. I can play this video in reverse. But yeah, the exhaust elbow is going to need to come off. So I can see now why this perhaps wouldn't be in everyone's annual maintenance job, because it's quite... It's quite the task to take all of this apart to get this, this bit out. But I think, uh, judging from the state of it that we've seen already, definitely worth doing. There's definitely some soot build up in there already, so I guess we could give that a clean, give that a scrape out, since we've got it off. I'm not sure exactly how many times now I've said this is maybe the moment of truth, but... Here we come. Aha! Ooh. Now that I've got the tubes out, I'm going to give them a good clean. I've got myself some pipe cleaner. Just popped down to Wilco. I went to the Chandler's and to buy a descaler, just a pot of descaler, was £50. £50. Anyway, I spent half that much and I went to Wilco's and I've bought not one, but two, three. A whole bunch of sandpaper to clean up all the nuts and bolts and bits on the engine that I've uh, taken the paint off of. Tell a lie. Four white vinegars, just in case that's not enough. We've got some descaler. We also have some uh, pipe cleaners. They might come in handy. And uh, again, something a bit more stubborn. We've got some wire wool. Also, I bought myself a toilet brush holder because, in my estimations, the toilet brush holder looked about the right size to house the tubage. And we could fill so we could use as little acid as we need to or as little descaler as we need to um, to get this clean so that was two pounds two pounds well spent that'll come in handy I think I figured out why this this isn't necessarily an annual job to take the tubes out and or just to take the tubes out, let alone clean them. Check this out. Ah. So in order to get the tubes out, 
in a D255F if you have a sail drive. So it turns out you need to remove the whole heat exchanger to get the angle to obviously get the tubes out. We've discussed this already. But there is, if you see here, like a gasket that is now broken in the removal process of this. So this is going to need replacing. So this is probably a good reason not to do this annually, otherwise you're constantly going to be replacing this gasket. But as a side note, did you know that Volvo, just to kind of alleviate some of the stress of trying to get to these almost impossible to reach parts, installed a cunning under the radar glockenspiel just to help alleviate the stress. Huh? There you go. A little bit of insider information for you there. I don't want anybody to think that my videos don't add some value. One of the silver linings to this being a hell of a lot more work than I ever dreamed it would be is that I now have access to all of this area and I can give the engine a good clean, a good clean up and a good paint up. I have cleaned up the engine as best I can. I've just masked off some areas but I don't want to get paint, just covered any of the voids into the engine itself. And uh, yeah, it's going to spruce this up a little bit. This funky hairdo that I'm giving the cylinder here is to uh, clear, clear out all the pipes. And the reason I put so many in is so I know when I've completed a pipe. Um, but I've literally just had this bathing now in white vinegar for just over a week and I appreciate you can get things like muric acid that act an awful lot faster and that's obviously personal preference but this is a really expensive um, piece of kit it's like 1200 pounds or something so I just wanted to bathe it in the most gentle acid that I could and I didn't really want to do any damage or lose any of the metal so it's been in there for about a week it's taken a while and now I'm going to clean it up all right the first one to come out the other side it's a black one One down. Taking off the old gasket. This is no easy feat. This involves a lot of kind of scraping and chipping and scraping and chipping, then wire wool, and then maybe a little emery cloth to give us a nice smooth finish. But this actually takes a lot longer than I realized. This is a stubborn boot. So here, where we've got the face for the exhaust elbow, we had a stainless steel exhaust which I fitted last year and the dissimilar metals in such a short space of time have done quite a, started quite a corrosion job here already. So I'm going to clean all this up and then put a new, I'm going to put a new gasket between the aluminium heat exchanger and the new stainless steel exhaust to again try and mitigate some of the damage caused by the dissimilar metals which I really screwed up on last time. Every day's a school day, hopefully. There's still enough coverage for the gasket here. I think I might just put a little bit of sealant on the underside here, because again, there's not a, a huge overlap. Um, there's no gaps, but given the level of that corrosion, I think some sealant is gonna just I'll finish that off and the exhaust elbow goes on top. Again, full disclaimer, I'm not a mechanic. Before I bought a boat, the only thing I'd ever achieved under the bonnet of a car looking at an engine was so I might have successfully topped up the window wiper washer, that's it. So I'm just kind of figuring this out, making a video. And the beautiful thing about sharing these videos is that more often than not, there's people in the comments that know a heck of a lot more than I do about working on engines will jump in the comments box and say, oh, maybe you could have done that differently. Actually, mind, you don't do this or whatever. So hopefully the video is useful to somebody out there. And if not, the comments section is nearly always alive with really um, constructive feedback that we can all learn from. So guys, if there's anything you would do differently to what I've done here or anything you think I should do, comments box, jump in board and let's, let's actually make this video hopefully a valuable resource or a, at least a useful video for other people in the future. Right, let's get back to it. Okay, so the cylinder there for the heat exchanger is all cleaned up. That has had a week soaking in white vinegar and uh, I've given that a good scrub. And that is now clear of all debris. 
Uh, this pile of mess over here, we're gonna clean up. I've got myself a new gasket set and uh, this comes with new O-rings as well as some uh, gasket sealant, I guess. And so I bought this, I'll pop a link in the description, but I actually got this for a really good price from a company called Parts for Engines. It's a British website, but there's so much on there, aftermarket stuff, that it's just a fraction of the price of Volvo Penta. So if you want to save you money on some bits and you're doing some engine work, then uh, check that link in the description. And uh, it's an amazing treasure trove website. But now, let's put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Let's put a little bit more grease on this o-ring here, and then that should. And then we've got the face, though I can't remember which way around the face goes exactly. I don't know. It's mega important, but I'm going to re-watch the old video of me taking it apart just so I can remember exactly how that went together. It's overheating. One of the things, and this right here if for no other reason at all is a good motivator to make youtube videos because when i forget and i forget a lot i can recap i didn't really the suspect video. was the exhaust elbow again i replace this i have concluded that this goes this way around cover in and again I've just put a tiny little bit of grease on the screw I don't want to put so much grease on that it vibrates loose but again I really want to stop this from seizing that's the goal here Okay, it's all a tad claustrophobic back here in the utility room. Um, so we're going to try and mount this, all these bolts, all these pin bolts. I don't know if that's a technical term, almost certainly not, but they've all been cleaned up, ready to go. We've got our gaskets, which we're going to fit back between the, the heat exchanger and the engine block, I guess, is that the term. And now we've got to take all these bits of tape off of here and get it all ready to go. Again, I'm just gonna clean this up with a little bit of emery cloth, get a nice clean surface ready for uh, applying the gasket. So I've just cleaned that all up and uh, just dry fit in the gasket and everything looks good. So now I'm just gonna put a little bit of sealant on the back of the gasket and then do the same on the other side, put a little bit of sealant on there and then, then fit the heat exchanger. Smear that around a little bit just to get a slightly more even spread. Okay, there we go. Note to self and anyone watching this, wear gloves. Before I'm pushing it together, I'm just making sure all the hoses and everything are out of the way. Again, I'm not going to do these up tight, I'm just going to put them in finger tight to start off with and then once they're all in place I'll start doing them all up gradually tightly just again so we get a nice even compression as the heat exchanger goes back onto the engine block. Alright, they're all nice and tight now, not crazy tight but fairly tight, just enough to, I say, to create that compression. Now I've got a couple little bits just to put back on here. I'm gonna attach this hose back to the bottom and then it's time to reinstall the starter motor all right let's get to it give that starter motor a little bit of touch up paint stop any corrosion there yeah i think that just slots in like there we go 
like that. And that's just a fixing in the top and a fixing in the bottom. Okay, so there's just two fixing bolts here that hold the start motor in place. Uh, I've saved you the pain of watching me fit that and also getting demonetized from YouTube for the amount of swear words that came out of my mouth, but we are just about there now. So just tighten those up a couple more. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of primer on here, again, just to help with corrosion. Here I'm gonna put like a little bit of silicone grease on, again, just to protect all these terminals from any any corrosion. And then we can start putting the, uh, the hoses back in place and then get this tested and fill it up. I'm gonna fill it up initially with some water, I think, uh, rather than, if there is a leak, losing an entire bottle of coolant. And then if we fill it up, get the engine running, it all looks good. I'll drain all the water out of this and then I'll fill it up with coolant. That's the okay, right, so we've just got our new gasket going on there. And again, that's gonna separate the, uh, the two dissimilar metals because we've got the stainless steel uh, exhaust elbow. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna put a little bit of gasket sealant on that because where we had those two metals the last few months touching, we've got some serious sort of corrosion starting to kick off here as well, which might create some gaps. Um, at the moment, there are no gaps, but I mean, there's very little coverage surface area. So again, I think just a little bit of gasket sealer is gonna be helpful there. Uh, I've popped all the hoses back on and now I'm just going to plug the electrics back in. Again, I didn't really do anything too dramatic with the electrics, so I just took them off sort of as they were. But here I've just put a tiny little bit of grease on there. I sanded this down because I think this is the connection for the temperature sensor, but it was a bit corroded. So I used a light emery cloth to get rid of the corrosion and then just a little bit of grease there to put that back on to protect it. And then we've got this black box here. Again, the fittings for which I just taped in place. I'll mount that now, and we'll be one step closer. So that fix the adjustment bar in place, and then we can use that to uh, give us the tension we want. And then once we've got the tension correct in the belt, then we just tighten this up, I believe, down here. And then we're all good. All right. And then go around here. And then up. This thing here, this thing is actually my new favorite purchase. It's just a little, it's a little ratchet spanner that bends. And I know to probably 99% of the people watching this video, this isn't anything new. This is probably par for the course. But I'm not a mechanic. This thing, this thing's an absolute godsend. Best tool in my toolbox. Okay. And again, there's not much moving on there, just a little bit of play. Just put a little spanner, you see it there, on the other side of this, so that it tightens up and it doesn't just keep spinning around in circles. So again, this is just gonna hold the alternator in place. All right, there we go. I'm just gonna test this with water, only because if there's a, a leak somewhere, I would sooner the water go piling into the bilge than a fresh, contain a load of coolant so we can spot a leak easily enough. I've filled this up now with water. Now I don't know if there's any airlocks or anything in the system so I'm going to start the engine let it run with the cap off and I don't know whether that might like burp out any trapped air maybe that's in it. I hope. Um, and we'll see if there's any signs of leaking. Good. Yeah, it looks nice. 
and since we've rebuilt and put the entire thing back together we have pressure tested it and we've pressure tested it in gear and quite high revs and so far touch wood we haven't had any overheating issues at all but it's fair to say that we haven't fully battle tested it yet and we probably won't until we set sail shortly in a couple of weeks time so if you haven't done so already hit the subscribe button, hit the notifications bell so you know when we release a video and you can follow us along and see how that repair work as well as many other jobs we're going to have to do repair-wise go. And also a huge thank you to two new patrons who've joined since I thanked everyone in our last video and that's Howard Lewis and Amy Berg. You guys are mega stars. In fact, everyone that supports us on Patreon is a mega star. And to everybody that goes over to our website directly and hits that little spinning run button and uh, contributes towards these video making efforts. Thank you too. You're all amazing. Right. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.